All right, good evening, everybody. Um, I know it's the end of the day, so I hope everyone is doing all right. You know, maybe you've got kids around you, maybe you've got other things going on, but just want to welcome you tonight and thank you for attending. Uh, this will be our session specifically about the application for the American Indian College Fund's Full Circle Scholarship. So I hope you're ready to learn. We have some great guests who are going to talk to us about um, their applications uh, and the work that they've done with our scholarship. But first, let's just take a moment, breathe in, breathe out. If you need to you know, step away from your computer at any time. I'm actually standing right now. I've been sitting all day. So do whatever you need to do to take care of your own wellness. And uh, I, I wanna thank you for, really thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is David Bledsoe. I'm the Student Engagement and Communications Manager here at the College Fund. And uh, in addition to myself, we also have our staff member, Daniel, who is our scholarships coordinator. Say hi, Daniel. Hey there. Thanks for being here, everybody. <laughs> and uh, Daniel will be doing part of our presentation tonight and then kind of facilitating our panel that we'll have later. So we're going to kick things off uh, with Daniel and I presenting just about some of the more technical things about the scholarship, some real short best practices. And that'll be for about 20 minutes. And then we'll have our panel uh, who will introduce after we're done presenting. And they're gonna not only present their own views and perspectives and give you some advice, but then also hopefully be able to answer some questions that you specifically have about maybe your application that you're working on for the Full Circle Scholarship. Uh, and just, you know, if you got questions, you know, Daniel and I are here, plus we have this great panel. So I just wanna thank you guys for joining. Uh, also, if Daniel, if you could put into the chat, uh, we'll also have the link specifically to our scholarships page which will have most of the resources that we're talking about tonight, which includes not only the application link, but application tips, FAQs, uh, our application walkthrough video, which kind of takes you through step-by-step step, and a few other things as well too. You can just click on that link or I've got collegefund.org right there. You can go there and click on scholarships or go to, directly to collegefund.org forward slash scholarships. So either of those will get you there, but. I will go ahead and start sharing my screen and then Daniel and I kind of start our presentation for the first segment. And any questions that you have, we're, we're not gonna actually start answering specific student questions until later in the presentation, but you can put those into the chat. And then at the end, we'll have a survey that you can, you can uh, fill out uh, and we'll have some great prizes, tablets, earbuds, t-shirts, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, just as a thank you for being here tonight and also to hopefully incent you to, to complete your application. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And this is the beginning of our session here. And I'll, I'll ask you one question because we do have an interactive feature with our presentations. If you look at the top, you see a little website, menti.com, and a number there. You can open up a different window uh, uh, with menti.com, a browser window, and put in that code, and you'll be able to interact. So I'll just get everybody started off with something easy, and that's, are you excited to learn about the Full Circle Scholarship application? Everybody kind of go into menti.com, put in one of your codes. You can tell me, how. Wh wh where's your level at right now? How are you feeling? Are you like dead at the end of the day? Are you kind of getting excited a little bit? Or are you, you just can't wait? You just cannot wait another second for this to, to start going. So my, come on, I need some responses here. So anybody logged on to Menti yet? Right now I'm at zero, zero, zero. I know we have a few people that are, that are on our call right now, so. Hey David, if you could go ahead and read, um, people are saying they can't see the code up at the very top. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the code is here. Let me get off. See, the, for some reason, it's going off my screen a little bit too. Let me, uh, code is 87685905. Let me type that in. 87685905. Boom. That's at nt.com. 
Oh, I, I just sent that too. Let me. Seven. There you go. All right. Now we got some responses here. Everybody's starting to get into it. I don't know why my my screen wasn't completely showing there. So I'm glad that so many of you have come out tonight. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, Daniel's going to start going over the parts of the application. But before we get into the actual application, I wanted to go over one time what our eligibility requirements are for the full, full circle scholarship. So, and this is just a little screenshot of our scholarship page there, which also has the eligibility and information. You must be a US citizen. Uh, there are a few Canadian citizens that can qualify under the J Treaty. Uh, and that would be something you can check out on the State Department page. You must be a tribal member or a descendant of a state or federally recognized tribe. Uh, and with descendancy, that can be either through parents or grandparents. You must have a 2.0 GPA from your high school or from a GED equivalent, equiv equivalency or uh, your existing college transcript. You must attend a nonprofit accredited school in the United States. So you can use your scholarship if you get one to attend any nonprofit accredited school. Uh, you must be a full-time student. And just to dispel this myth, some people think that you must have a financial need. You do not have to have a financial need to get one of our scholarships and use that. You don't have to submit a FAFSA or anything of that nature. So that is not required. So I'm gonna let Daniel kind of jump into the actual application, all the parts of that, and we'll get started with what documents you need. Yeah, so, so even before you jump into the application, you wanna make sure you get these three documents um, because you're gonna to have to upload these at different points of the, the process. So you, you, know, you wanna have those ready to go. Um, so you'll need a, um, a photo, a digital photo of yourself. Um, and we usually say, you know, semi-professional, you don't have to go out and hire a, a professional photographer, but also you don't want to just take a selfie of your, uh, uh, you know, of yourself and upload that. So you want to, you know, try to look a little bit professional, have a friend um, take a photo of you um, looking, looking professional. Um, and then you're going to need your proof of your tribal enrollment, whether that's your enrollment or your parents or grandparents, and then a birth certificate showing your relationship to that um, enrolled um, family member, your enrolled relative. Um, and then you'll need uh, your most recent transcript An unofficial transcript is fine. So get, gather those together. Um, and then, you know, when you go to uh, collegefund.org, you know, click on that apply button, you'll jump into our database where you can then create your, um, your profile. And so I think we can move on to this is what you're going to see. The screen on the left is kind of where you'll create your username and password. Please hold on to that so that you can log in when you need to update your, um, specifically your contact information. You know, most of the, the information that we're going to send to you is going to be at whatever email address you put in there. So make sure you're putting in the one that you use the most. Um, or you might, you know, might miss out on, um, on crucial information for your scholarship. Um, so you'll enter all your information in the profile and as you get down, you know, you'll, you'll work through, you'll put in um, your program information, you want to put in program information for the, the um, school and um, degree program you're going to be in the fall, right, so in this coming fall. Um, you don't want to put in if you're, you know, if you're in, you're in an associate's program now at this school and in the fall I'm going to be transferring to another school in a bachelor's program, you want to put in that, the, the program information for the, for the coming year. And then as you get down toward the bottom, you're going to see questions asking about honors and distinctions you received, as well as um, um, your extracurricular activities. So I think, David, were we going to use Menti again to kind of get what people thought, what types of things people should include? Um, yeah, you can, you can use Menti for this part, too. One of the big uh, parts that develops your score as to, to whether you're successful with your application is going to be the experiences or honors that you share. So why doesn't everybody just give us some ideas of things that you would put into that section that, you know, talks about experiences that you have, honors that you have in school, extracurriculars, things of that nature. What types of things do you think is going to help you to be successful? I'd like to kind of see 
what types of things you're putting in. So we have uh, GPA, past scholarships you've received, uh, president's list, that's a good one. Any academic awards like honor society, internships, volunteer experiences, sports awards, you know, sports and clubs, activities like that. Tribal community activities, those are great. We're always looking for community involvement, leadership experiences, honor roll. Uh, if you're working a job, that's always great, employment. Um, band, music. Art, uh, things that you're involved in there. That's some great, some great suggestions here. GPA, volunteering, a lot of the same types of things. Um, but actually, one of the things that um, Daniel pulled together was a list of areas that were shared in like all the successful applications that we had from the last cycle. So that's what we're going to kind of show you now, and, and Daniel could talk about this a little bit more. Yeah, so I mean, you mentioned people mentioned a lot of these things, and I think um, you know I went in and just looked at the top scoring um, applications this past year and found kind of these are the main um, categories of um, extracurriculars and honors and distinctions that people included, um, <clears throat> and it's any type of volunteer experience where you're going above and beyond your you know your schooling um, to 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 do other things to be involved in your in your community and. Um, that could be employment, as somebody mentioned, internships, sports, music, art, involvement with community and cultural activities, working with nonprofits, faith communities, clubs. I did want to say, like, there is one specific scholarship that says people, somebody, they, you know, you have to name our club in your application to get this particular one. So you want, if you're involved with a specific club or organization, put the name of it in there because there are scholarships that that are looking for their their name reflected in your application. So, um, so do that. Um, any summer programs, if you're involved in student government, you want to include that. Um, and then for, you know, your honors and distinctions, people mentioned honor roll and dean's list and any academic, athletic, or leadership awards. Um, any kind of community recognition or, or honor um, that, that, that you've been giving. Can I um, jump we, in real quick, Dave? Yeah, please, Naomi, go ahead. So um, I'm Naomi Bishop, I'm Akna Othampima, and I'm one of the scholarship readers. Um, and one thing that somebody asked in the chat, does working count? Absolutely, if you're doing a job and going to school, tell me about it. If you are raising a family and going to school, tell me about it. If those activities count, um, working counts, that's definitely a full-time activity. Share with me about your job and what you do um, in your work, because those are really important things as well. Um, lots of non-traditional students and adult students go back to school. My mom went back to school at age 40. Um, and so, yes, if you are working as a CNA or if you are working in any kind of a different environment, please tell us about those in that extracurricular activities area. Um, any awards you've gotten from work, you know, sometimes workplaces also have different um, ways to recognize, you know, employee of the month or things like that. Um, please share that with us. And parenting and teaching, yes, that all counts. So the more you share, the better for us because it helps us really um, see who our um, applicants are and learn more about you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's perfect. So, you know, I had in there, there was a lot of different things that people listed that were just um, basically what I list here is selection for involvement through any selective process. If you had to apply for something or you're in a competitive process of any kind, that's something that, that you work for. And that's an honor you know, to, 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 to be involved with whatever that is. So um, that could look different for a lot of different people, but, but include that as well. And what, one thing that stood out to me, you know, some, some folks listed you know, traditional rites of passage that is traditional you know, you know, in, to their specific community. Um, but that just shows, you know, ways that you're involved in your community and that, that your, your, your community has recognized you, um, you know, in, in, in various ways. So, um, so those are all things that, you know, like Naomi said, we give, it, give our evaluators a sense of who you are and, um, and, and I think that's really what they're looking for. So, so once you've completed your profile, then you'll be able to move on to the applic actual application, scholarship application. If you reach this page and it gives you a message saying that you need to first complete your profile, there's something that you missed. And this is, this is something I get several times a week, somebody emailing me saying, I completed my profile, but I can't access the application. 
something was missed. So um, go back and make sure every um, box is filled and there's some search buttons that you need to click on to access um, that you may have missed. So just make sure you do that. Um, and then um, you'll be able to jump into the application. You will um, list your program details for the upcoming semester. And then you're going to encounter our three short answer questions. And those are really, um, again, like your best opportunity to tell our um, scholarship evaluators um, about you and about your um, unique story and your goals for the future. And, and one other thing I'll, I'll mention too, the difference between the profile and the application. The profile, you can go back and update that, change things, your phone number, your address changes, school, all, all those types of things you can change at any time. But once you click on completing the application, you have to complete it then. <laughs> you can't save a draft of that and then go back in and submit your application later. So these short answer questions that Daniel's gonna discuss, it's really important that you really get these done before you go into the actual application. That way you can just copy and paste these at a later time. Yeah, so we always recommend, you know, you know um, start these in Word, a word processing document, um, you know, Google Docs or Word, um, Microsoft Word, and then copy and paste them once you've completed them. But so these are the three questions. What challenges have you overcome to attend college? What are your educational and career goals? And how will this scholarship help you achieve them? And how will completing your education impact the Native American community? So these are, these are things that you'll, you'll wanna spend some time thinking about before you even start writing, or you can start you know, a draft and, as you're thinking through it. Um, and we do have some resources on our website that kind of help you it, create an outline if that's something that would be helpful. And there's a couple of different types of outlines um that um that we'll point out i think later in the presentation where you can find those but um a good another good idea is to have somebody else look over these once you're done um uh, with your first draft um or put them aside for a while and come back to them but some of the things that i kind of recommend are um make sure your these answers you're you're answering them clearly completely and compellingly and so what i mean by that is be specific in what you're talking about. You know, if you're talking about your your educational career goals, um, be as specific as you can about what you would like to achieve or what kind of things you want to do. Um, and then completely, you know, have a beginning, a middle, and an end to your answer. So if you're talking about your your challenges, you want to talk about what the challenge was, how you approached it, and then what the outcome was. So have kind of tell that complete story about. Um, you know, how you overcame that, that challenge. Um, and then compellingly, you know, we, you do want to engage your, your reader in, um, in telling your story. And so, you know, ways to do that are, are um, you know, make sure you're using descriptive language that your ideas are flowing one to the next. Um, and the other, the other part of it um, is that, you know, making sure your technical conventions are on point in terms of, you know, your, um, your grammar and your uh, punctuation, all those, you know, little pieces of, of um, actually um, constructing your essays are, are things that are, um, you know, evaluated in your, in your answers. Um, and then, you know, we have there, please don't plagiarize. You know, we're, we're looking to get your story and, and understand about you and know you can't get that from, from another source, you know. Um, you might find some answers, you know, to essay questions out there online. Um, but, um, you know, th they're not going to be able to tell your story as, as you can. And um, there are ways, you know, to, to you know, in services that, you, that can be used to, to identify plagiarism. So we just ask that you, that you not, you know, it could, um, it could uh, jeopardize your uh, scholarship application. We don't want that to happen. So, um, yeah, just, you know, make it your own. And this is the area where we're going to learn the most about you. All, all the kind of technical things like, you know, extracurriculars and honors, your GPA, where you're from, those are all you. But this is really where you get to tell your story about yourself, what your goals are, uh, what types of opportunities you're excited about, why you want to go to school. 
this also is one of those areas, just like um, Daniel mentioned before about, you know, naming a specific club that you're in. If there's a specific degree or career path or something that you want to find, you need to, to, to tell us about that in a lot of detail. The, the, the students who answer these three questions in just a sentence or two, they're usually not the ones who are going to be receiving a scholarship from us. You need to use this opportunity to really tell us about what your goals are, why you want to be in school, what you want to do with that, what influences you had, what, what people in your community or your family or friends, what, what happened that, you know, kind of set you on the path that you're on or that got you interested in college or the, or the area that you're studying. And our panelists are going to talk about their own individual situations a lot about this too, because these short answer questions are very important. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay, yeah, so these are some of the resources we have on our website. Um, we have um, frequently asked questions and application tips. And I would suggest take a look at these um, before you start filling out your application. And then um, if you do have any questions as you go through it, you can come back and refer to these. Um, like I mentioned that on the application tips, there are um, a couple examples of different outlines you can use if you want if you want to do that that would be helpful in your process of writing out those essays um, you know different people have different processes and that might be helpful um, but those can be accessed on our web website if you go to collegefund.org slash scholarships um, you can access those and I, it looks like somebody just dropped those links ben did thanks ben um, to those the uh, like tips and faq um, web pages on our website are there. So I'd recommend, you know, checking those out. Um, it, it, and if you do run into questions that you're just, you know, you're stuck and you can't um, uh, um, progress, you know, email me at scholarships at collegefund.org um, and I, I'll get back to you with, with, um, with whatever answers you need. And finally, we get to the part where Daniel and I stop talking. <laughs> which I'm sure you're very happy about. We've talked about uh, several parts of the application process, but now I just wanna introduce our panel. I'm gonna introduce all three of these great women um, just briefly, but what I wanna give them a chance to do is to talk about not only their experiences, but their, specifically their experiences with college going, with filling out the full circle application, and kind of how that helped them achieve their goals. And then we have Naomi Bishop, who piped in earlier, who's one of our, our application readers. We have really great Native professionals in higher ed who are reading all the applications that come in, thousands and thousands of applications every year. And she's also going to be giving her perspectives, too. So I'll introduce each of you very quickly, and then I'll let you introduce yourselves uh, and, and tell a little bit about yourself. So Shoshani Elliott is uh, a Northwest Indian College graduate. She's actually at a different school now pursuing her bachelor's in human services. And she is a past uh, college fund ambassador and has worked with a lot of students uh, through the TRIO program and other things to help students apply and to get prepared for college and get excited and get ready to go. Samantha is also another one of our Full Circle Scholarship recipients. She went to Dartmouth College and just successfully applied to our American Indian Law School uh, scholarship. She, she, she will be heading to Harvard uh, to get her law degree. And she has worked uh, with the, um, the Peace Corps, with uh, interned with the Department of Justice. She's done all sorts of things and can kind of talk to, about her particular experience. She is also obviously a, a successful scholarship um, applicant. And then, as I mentioned, Naomi, one of our great readers, she has a master's in library science from the University of Washington. And uh, she is an associate librarian at the University of Arizona College of Medicine, Phoenix. And she's also served as the president of the American Indian Library Association and other groups. So these three are each gonna introduce themselves. If we could just go in that order, Shoshani, Samantha, and Naomi, if you could just introduce yourselves, I'm gonna stop sharing uh, my screen here. Okay. 
so that we can see you guys. You can unmute yourselves as you go. And like I said, just tell a little bit about your experience, your college going experience in your application and then how the scholarship helped you. And then we'll get into all the questions. So Shoshani is first. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Shoshani Perez. I am the first year experience advisor at Northwest Indian College. Um, I was a traditional, I was a second generation college student technically. Um, I was a, more of a traditional student. I graduated from high school and went straight to college. Um, I originally had intended to go to a big university in Virginia, um, but I was waitlisted. And so um, through fate, <laughs> I would have it, um, and some family connections, uh, my uncle brought me up here to Bellingham and I toured the campus and just fell in love. Um, and so I worked through Northwest Indian College <clears throat> to get my Associate of Arts and Science General Direct Transfer. Um, and was immediately decided I wanted to continue working um, in the field of education. And so I stayed in education um, and worked for Northwest Indian College in the admissions department um, for about four years. <laughs> um, it's weird to think about how long it's been. Um, but then I transitioned shortly thereafter um, into the advising role. And I've been an advisor for almost four years now as well. So I've been working for the college for about eight years. Um, the second half of my college journey was a little bit more non-traditional. Um, I So between my associate's degree and my bachelor's degree, I took a break. Um, I took a break a lot of the time. A lot of biggest reason was I had never really held what I called a big girl job. Um, I did work study while I was in school, but I never had an eight to five job. And so um, I didn't want to overwhelm myself in terms of working and going to school at the same time. And so I decided to take a step back and work for a year. Um, and then I chose to, because at the time Northwest Indian College only had our bachelors of science, they didn't have our human services program, um, which is what I wanted to do. And so I applied to Western Washington University, did a, a quarter there, but because of the curriculum and the way it was structured, I couldn't work 40 hours a week and go to school 40 hours a week during the same time period. So um, it was unfortunately kind of told to me that I had to either choose work or school. And so in order to continue surviving and living, um, I chose to go to work um, and then just kind of put school on hold again. Um, and then from there, after another short break, I took a lot of breaks. Um, I went to University of Washington and I enrolled in a program that was online. So it was supposed to be helpful for uh, me going to school. And when I looked at it, it was education and family studies. And so um, at the time, I really wanted to work with young children and their families. Um, and so I thought I could do some human services work with that the way it was pitched to me. They're like, oh, yeah, totally do that. This is where I learned to really do my research <laughs> um, because I got into classes and it was actually an early learning program. Um, which is not what I wanted to do. Although I love small children, I did not want to teach <laughs> small children. Um, and so unfortunately, during that time period, I did lose somebody that was very close to me. And so I chose, um, I just could not continue to go to school. Um, it was too much of a loss for me to concentrate and do what I needed to. Um, and so I actually was talked back into Northwest Indian College um, by one of my professors who I worked with for psychology and sociology, which was a big passion of mine when I first started school. Um, and she's like, come on, just come back. Like you can do a couple classes here and there. Um, and so I came back to Northwest Indian College um, and I started my Bachelor of Arts in, you take a breath, community advocates and responsive education and human services. Um, and so my focus when I was in that program was really I focused a lot on equity in education. Um, and that's still what my focus is on now. Um, and so I graduated in June of 2019 with my Bachelor of Arts in the CARE program, which is our short title for the program. Um, and then I transitioned um, after getting married and actually that summer <laughs> graduating and becoming an ambassador, um, I was set to do my master's in adult higher education, which is still where I'm headed. Um, but unfortunately, but fortunately in a strange way, um, I was actually found out about two weeks into my master's program, I was seven weeks pregnant with my daughter. So um, kind of a force of nature decided to tell me that it wasn't the right time. And so um, I am again taking another small, hopefully small break um, while my daughter grows up a little bit more so that I can be in tune with her. Um, 
I have been very fortunate um, through the college fund through many different reasons. I've gotten to partner with the college fund um, in regards to doing different things with um, the college pathways program when it was still around. So helping high school students to get into college and how that works. Um, but I have also been really fortunate in the funding that it has helped me. And so kind of what I've been putting in the comments and I've seen Naomi do some of that as well. Um, is it's really about telling your story. When you're applying for scholarships, especially when you're applying for AICF scholarships, um, it's important to tell your story. We as Indigenous students are different than many other students in the world. We face different adversities than those um, in normal standard situations, right? And so it's important to talk about those for a couple of different reasons. One, because yes, it can help you get that scholarship and get that money. But the other important reason, especially with the college fund in particular, is they can take that information and say, you know, um, students are having a difficult time with FAFSA or, you know, all of these, you know, I, you, you're a mom that is working on teaching your child language and you really want to go to school and you're looking for a program and they can help you to, find that but they can also help to create programming and scholarships and things and raise funds around that specific need which is super awesome and amazing um because it's almost kind of like it works for us even if we don't get the scholarship there's more things that you can do um so i have been very much um so I have received the TCU, so the Tribal College and University Scholarship, um, which is the same application that you guys are applying for. And I always encourage students to kind of almost overshare. Um, and the reason for that is it's you're not able to sit there and tell Naomi your story when she's reviewing your application or David your story when you're they're reviewing your application. And so the more that you can tell the person that's reading the application, the better. So sharing the good things and the bad things that have led you to where you are is going to be the most important. Um, and the reason for that is they can't stop and they can't pick up the phone and say, Samantha, what was the thing that you were doing like two years ago? They can't ask those questions. And so it's important for us to tell our stories. Um, and so I've seen some other comments about like listing things. I always encourage students, um, there's a couple of different things that you can do and things that I have in my arsenal um, that I use and they are, I use a resume just because I've been working. Um, but one of the other things that I was actually taught in high school, that strangely enough, 10 years later has stuck with me, um, it's called a brag sheet. And it's a place for you to list all of those things that um, you've heard Daniel and, um, God, my brain just went blank. I want to say David, but I don't know why. My brain is so blank right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It is like the end of my day. <laughs> it's been a long day. I've been at conferences all day. Um, but you can give those to people so that they can write you letters of recommendation, but you can also use those as places to like kind of make your life a little easier to copy and paste things um, way down the road when you're doing tons of scholarships, which is the best way to go to school so you don't have to pay it back. Um, please learn from me. Don't get student loans. <laughs> I'm still paying them back um, and I'm not even done with school yet. Um, and so those are some really great things that I can talk about. Um, just as to where I come from. Um, my journey is nowhere near over. Um, I'm definitely going to continue on to get my master's. So, you know, applying for full circle again in the future will be something that I can do. Um, and that's great to know that I have that as a backup as I continue to move forward. Um, so I always encourage students to, if you don't get it the first go around, keep applying. There's so many students that apply for scholarship funding and the college fund is always finding more scholarship funding out there. So always apply every single year, just make it that habit um, to go ahead and apply and apply for as many scholarships as you can. So I think that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Shoshani. I appreciate that. And one of the great things, in addition to like a brag sheet where you have a list of things, is also working on your personal statement. And I'll have Samantha talk about that a little bit because she has a very compelling story and she's she puts together very well in words. So Samantha, go please go ahead and introduce yourself. You guys are far too kind to me. Um, when you want to knock everyone, that's how we Samantha Maltese, New Tomas, Akunaha, Nat, Nin Wapanak. So my name is Samantha Maltese. I'm a member of the Wampanoag tribe of Aquina, located here in my ancestral territory in Massachusetts. Um, and yeah, so I guess I'll start as a as a first and undergrad 
college fund scholar and now a future law school scholar. My journey with the college fund has been um, long and very positive. Um, so I applied obviously to the Full Circle Scholarship back in 2014, 2015. Don't do the math. Anyone in this room, please don't do the math. Um, I <laughs> was obviously successful with that and that really opened up opportunities for me to focus not only on my work in school at Dartmouth, but also the extracurricular stuff that becomes important when you are applying to grad schools and law schools, what have you. So with the ample time that I have, thanks to the funding that I received and wasn't working, you know, full-time jobs, I was able to do these extracurriculars that I think spoke to my interests and spoke to a lot of the application uh, materials that I was able to submit to law schools down the line just including like on campus work that didn't have to do like the like the um the hardcore jobs that I would have otherwise been doing I was able to work a little bit in public policy a little bit in law related fields on campus and so that allowed me to kind of put together more of a solid narrative I think and then obviously internships are a huge thing for college students so I was able to do quite a few unpaid internships thanks to having just you know not worrying about money as much as I would have otherwise been. So as I forget who mentioned, but I was in DC for a little bit during both of my um, off terms, I guess all three of my off terms, the summers. And so I was on the Hill working for Senate Committee on Indian Affairs for a little bit. And then I switched over to Department of Justice, Office of Tribal Justice. And I think those really made my application story and my personal story make sense for why law school, like why I was pursuing kind of uh, justice. And so um, very thankful for that, for the funding for undergrad. And then fast forward, graduated from Dartmouth in 2018, um, <laughs> joined the Peace Corps for, you know, uh, going almost to two years, but I was actually evacuated because of COVID-19 um, back to the States last year and then kind of ended up jobless, wasn't sure where I was going to be, um, took the time really at that point to um, work hard, study for the LSAT and get my application materials together. And that's a big piece of advice that I'd have for everyone um, who's going into both undergrad, or I guess applying into undergrad, applying to the scholarship, applying to grad school, just take the time to really think through your story, your ambitions, your motivations, and wh why, you know, why you, like, why, why you, do you want to pursue education? What impact do you want to have on Indian country in the world? And I think having the downtime allowed me to focus on that narrative for myself, and even just beyond the application stuff, think about it, you know, internally, and really set my sights on things that I wanted to achieve. Um, I did end up getting a job, which was very helpful. I work at Survival International, which is an international indigenous rights organization. Um, and that's been pretty formative. I talked about that in my law school application a lot. Um, but for the uh, Harvard Law School application through the college fund, that scholarship, I talked a little bit about more of my background, you know, in the tribal community. And I want to echo the oversharing part. Um, it felt a little uncomfortable to talk about kind of the what I've been through and like my financial needs as a student. I come from a prideful family and a prideful community. So talking about like needing money was difficult, but I think it really spoke to why, you know, it was important for me to receive the funding, um, what I could do with that in the future, and then really focusing on what I wanted to do moving forward, like not just going to school, but what I wanted to do with my education, you know, looking farther down the line. And I recommend most folks think about, you know, maybe five years, 10 years, even if you're not sure, just like give them a little semblance of what, you know, you as a professional is going to look like in the real world. 
Um, and, and yeah, so I was obviously successful, very, very grateful. Um, I will be attending Harvard in the fall, Harvard Law School in the fall, and I'm really excited to start my legal education um, in order to serve and support tribal sovereignty and serve the rest of Indian country as well as my own community. And, and I'm gonna pass it, pass it to the next, okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Naomi Bishop. I'm Akhmet Otham Pima from the Gila River Indian community. Um, I'm an urban native. I grew up here, I was born here in Phoenix at the Phoenix Indian Medical Center and then grew up in Mesa, Arizona, um, did the public schools. And then for high school um, or for college, I actually went to the East Coast for one year and it was too cold. And so I transferred back to Arizona. I went to U of A for my undergrad. Um, and then did a master's at the University of Washington in library science. And um, here I am as a professional librarian 10 years out of school. But I remember those days of applying for scholarships and asking for money <laughs> like it was yesterday. Um, lots of lots of students that I work with in the libraries. I tell them, you know, just share your story, share about your family, share about your community, um, share about what your goals are really that's the part I think it's hard when you're young to think through of like, what do I want to be and what do I want to do? Um, and this is the opportunity to kind of mull through that. Sometimes there are applications where people have like two things, there are three things they want to do, or like seven things they want to do, and they're not sure. Share that, you know, tell me you're, you're undecided, but you're thinking about engineering or this or that. Um, because it really does take time. I usually tell freshmen, like, it takes time to figure out what you want to do and where you want to go and where you want to work and where you want to live. So um, think about those. And um, I think it really depends on um, where you are in your life of what your story is going to be. And so obstacles that you've um, had to encounter or overcome are going to look different for everybody. Um, your goals and your career education is going to look every look different from everybody. If you have a family, if you have caregiving responsibilities, um, that's going to be you know different from others. Um, but share that because that helps us as readers really get to know you and really understand your story and give you the money. <laughs> so um, that's my advice. Also with your native community, I know I saw some things in the chat about people who grew up away from their communities. Um, are you involved with any, you know, um, Native student clubs in your area, or do you volunteer in the community? It doesn't always have to be with the Native community, you know, your community is whoever you're at. Um, and so whatever that community is around you, how are you um, a member of it and participating in it, share that story. Um, I know growing up for me, like I would spend summers going back to see my grandparents, like it's like 30 minutes away or we go on the weekends or whatever, but it's still, it was a different story from my cousins, you know, growing up on the res, um, but share whatever your story is. Um, we want to hear it and um, we want you to succeed. So um, apply and um, share as much as you can in your 300 words. Um, I do encourage people to use Microsoft Word or something like that, um, Google Doc or whatever, to try to like spell check or, um, kind of make sure that you're not um, going over the word limit because then you have to cut stuff. Um, but just try to, to give a few sentences, give more than one sentence, give more than two sentences. Um, I can't tell you how many applications come in with um, one or two sentences. And it's really hard for me to, to rate that, to judge that, to score it because I don't really know the person. Um, and so if you can write um, as many you know, sentences or things that are actually gonna try to summarize your life and and give us a good idea of who you are and what you want to do in school um, anything you do outside the classroom counts so if you are working or if you are um, caregiving or if you're teaching um, whatever that is or whatever that looks like please include that I know um, it's different you don't have extracurriculars when you're an adult like you might have some volunteer activities or coaching, but sometimes you're just a parent and that's okay. Just share that, you know, sometimes you are um, working full time and taking care of a family. You can just share that um, as there is room, for, you know, to just share a couple things. Um, I don't know what else to say, except <laughs> that I'm really excited to read again this year. I know 
COVID has had a big impact on education and all of us. I say that coming from medical, you know, from a medical community where I work. And so share those stories if you can. And if it's too difficult, it's okay. If you have to take a break, if you have to, you know, regroup, it's okay to take a break from school. It's okay to transfer. It's okay to rest and heal. Um, that's just what I wanted to share with you all tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. And thank you for sharing that. I know this is this has been a rough year for us. And, and one of the things we want to do with this event is encourage you to bounce back. To we want you to think about your future. We want you to not think about what's gone on in the past year or where you're at now, but what you can accomplish. And that's what the scholarships are there to help you to do. But you can't get them if you don't apply. But uh, one of the things that Naomi shared, um, if you're comfortable in sharing it, is very important, which is those personal things. Um, if you've had impacts of your life, people who've passed away, people who have inspired you. Uh, I know that Samantha in her applications talked a lot about racism in her communities. She lives in Martha's Vineyard. Can you think of a more <laughs> white privileged area in the world and, and being an indigenous person in that area? If there are personal things like that, you can share them and you won't be judged with your applications. That's gonna tell us more about you and maybe the reasons why you're doing things. You know, Shoshani, by the way, if you want to follow Shoshani on Facebook, she has posted the cutest pictures of her little girl. I love to see them. But we have a lot of non-traditional students that apply too. And so talking about the work that you do as a parent, you know, in a job, whatever that is, that is just as equal to anything that you can do in high school with activities or things of that nature. So uh, one of the things, uh, let me, uh, Daniel, do you have any specific questions that you wanted to put to the panel first or that you saw in the chat? Um, you know, I, there were some questions, you know, I got disconnected here. And so my chat kind of uh, reloaded here. And so I'm not seeing the questions that were. That's uh, okay. Earlier. So I don't, I don't necessarily have anything um, pressing. I was, I was going to start with, with um, uh, Naomi because she's done so much reading for us. Like she said, it's important to overshare. It's important to talk about those things. But I didn't know if you had like, like the top things that you hate and the top things that you love about the best applications that you read. I would say the top things that I love are um, reading about the impact that people want to have in their communities. Like for me to see that, to see the future is really cool. Um, and also people who acknowledge the past, you know, people who are talking about the struggles and the barriers and the, you know, life as real as it is. And so those would be the top things that I love about reading. Um, the things that are not so good, are hard, are like really short essays um, and things that like stick out to me. Also, some people overshare in a way that they're just repetitive. And that sometimes is hard to read because you're reading so many applications. And so if you've already shared something with me, like in your extracurriculars, and then that's all you talk about in your essay, then it's hard for me. You know, if you're an athlete, it's great that you're an athlete. Um, but also if, if you're going to play college sports, that's great too. But just try to not be too repetitive um, in what you're sharing because we it takes a lot of time to read these. And so as much as you can be concise and clear in like just sharing about yourself, that's really helps. Um, and um, yeah, that would be like my top pet peeves and my like things that I like. Um, yeah. And that's a great thing to, to go back to one of the points that Daniel and I talked about before, which is you, you don't have to press the apply button and then come up with your your answers right then you can spend time working on this and a lot of that editing writing something out go away from it for a couple of days or a week or something and come back to it have other people read it have it them look at it that can help you be clear not repetitive um, you know maybe even come up with different vocabulary check your spelling all those types of things I, I know that name Naomi would say this but she can tell when someone is prepared their question answers. She can tell. It's not like 
you know, the person who just wrote it down really quick, that it's going to be obvious that you're going to be different. So the more time you spend on it, even if it's just, you know, a day, if you spend some time on that, prepare it and put it together, it's going to make a difference. Um, well, could, could both Samantha and Shoshani kind of talk about how they came up with some of the narratives and things that they shared specifically and how you made choices about that? Because like you said, sometimes you don't know what you want to share and what you don't, you know, you guys can, can, uh, can jump in there. And Shoshani has her little girl with her, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Apparently she heard mom talking back here and it was after dinner. So she decided she had to come join. She joins all of my meetings. Apparently that's what makes me the best employee most of the time. So I'll take it as a win. <laughs> um, I think when I, what I choose to share, I think one would really depend, just like if you're applying for a job, it depends on what you're applying for, right? Um, and so when it comes to um, the full circle and the TCU specifically, I like talking about um, personally my experiences in because I want to continue in education. Um, I talk about what it was like growing up off the reservation in the educational system and how that felt and how it was different for me to go to a tribal college and the things that I learned about myself that made me who I am today. And so that helps to tell my story a little bit more. Um, and then that also leads into why I wanna do the work that I do. Why do I fight for equity? Um, in education with minorities, <laughs> indigenous minorities, um, is so that, you know, my daughter has a chance so that our youth have a chance. And so um, those are, so that's kind of what I usually will share is because it's, um, I was actually watching a TED talk today. It was my, my, so what is all of the terrible things that have happened to me. This woman had a slogan. It was, so what, what now? And so the slogan, my piece is, that was my so what. I went to a white school, big known white school. My what now is how do I change everything that I've been through and create the difference? And so that's what I write about and talk about. Is that what you write and talk about too? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I feel so bad coming after the cuteness of that one. But anyway, um, so I, I definitely echo all of that. And I think I also want to mention, and this is a little sidetracking, but I reread my application stuff after I had submitted it after the deadline and everything. And I found grammatical errors in it. And so I recommend everyone like quadruple check because I sat on these essays for months like it really was like sitting down thinking about everything that I've overcome everything that I wanted to do and like really just pouring my heart out and then editing and editing and trying to cut it down to the word count and I still miss some stuff so you know like send it to people have them read it uh obviously it worked out well so it's not a deal breaker but I definitely recommend going through that with a fine tooth comb. Um, but I will say that I think the same goes for me. Like I talked a lot about my background and my involvement in my own community and I had a different experience. So I am the daughter of my tribal chairwoman. I was all, she was previously the historic preservation officer. So the things that I were talking about were, you know, culture, being involved in the spiritual aspect of being a native person, but also like getting really wrapped up into the politics of tribal sovereignty and tribal tribal politics in general. So that experience really shaped why I'm pursuing law, why legal education is important to me. Um, because as everyone here knows, probably like being native is inherently political. And when we exist as native peoples, we are embedded into this weird, government that just decided to colonize the United States and then create federal Indian law to put on to tribal nations. And so I think that it spoke really well and easily to come from that background and then um, come into law and what I want to do for Indian country, which is essentially just like address some of the questionable precedents that you know ground a lot of federal Indian law and policy and I think that the way that I talked about that was personal in a way that was a little bit more 
uh, vulnerable than I tend to be with strangers, but it it did its job. And that's what I think a lot of these scholarships and these applications for schools want you to do is be vulnerable and explain to them, you know, like what's really motivating you? Like, why do you want to do the things you do? Um, and I had a few other notes, which were just, um, let me see, oversharing your story makes sense. Make sure your story makes sense. Like you are a human, you will have a backstory, you have a future ahead of you. Your story does essentially make sense. So just make sure that you get that across to other people um, in a way that you know, wraps it up tightly within the word count, but in a, in a narrative, in a beginning, a middle, an end, um, that speaks to who you are as a human being. Um, yes, 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 okay. <laughs> and you both did a great job of talking about that. It doesn't matter what your goal is. Showing, showing your related experience and what you wanna to do towards your goal, that, that's a story. You, know, you have your intro, your middle, and your end. That's it right there. Your past, what you're doing, and the, what your goals are are very important. And the way that both of them connected that, you saw that in them talking about it. Even what Naomi mentioned about you know sports, one of our past ambassadors uh, was really into sports and had an injury, and that inspired him to go into physical therapy. Uh, and that was his story. You know, even though you know it, the specific parts of it may not have been that interesting. He was talking about where he was and where he wanted to go and what that would do for other people, what it would do for him. Those are really important. Do you wanna give yeah, a little bit of context on that, Naomi? Yeah, I think um, just sharing things that happen in your life um, and, op and that kind of goes along with obstacles, but I think we have had lots of people, you know, think that they want to go in one direction um, and then something happens they get laid off or you know COVID hits or um, things come out of the blue I think sometimes there's even like times where you know um, you can't get into the classes that you need to graduate you know like it's not nothing of your own fault it's just the system and things happen and it's really frustrating um, and so it's important to share when those things happen or what that does and how that changes your direction. I mean, I was working in libraries and as an undergraduate student and somebody said, you know, you can do this as a job, as a career. And I said, really? Like you can get paid to help people find books and research articles and everything. Um, and that really just set me on this path of like, hey, I better look into this. Like, I didn't know you needed a master's degree. I didn't know you need to do all this. But once I kind of had some direction um, and it was graduate students that told me this, like people who were working in the library that were graduate students said, hey, what about this as a career? That really um, set me on a path. And so sometimes you don't know where you're going to go or what you're starting with. But then there's a moment, usually some point in your life where you kind of have this aha moment or maybe I should do this instead or something goes really wrong. For me, it was, you know, going to the East Coast and realizing that's not where I'm supposed to be. Um, and transferring, and I always tell students, like, it's okay to transfer, like, you don't have to stay if you're not happy or things are, are miserable or going wrong or you need to be at home, like, it's okay to transfer and find other options or to do school online, um, that's all good, um, just really research the school that you're going to, make sure it's an accredited university so that your credits count and that you get, you know, credit for what you're paying for, that's one tip of advice also for students. Um, but once you have those moments in your life of what do you want to do, share that, you know, like share what experiences you have, share if it was a parent or a grandparent or somebody that, um, had an impact on your life that like my grandpa told me, go to school, get an education. Like that was his thing to make him proud was for us to go to school, you know, to graduate. Um, and that was, you know, something that really had a Im big impact on my life because he didn't have those same opportunities, um, yeah, that's my uh, aha moment advice, changing directions. It happens. Share that if you have to. Yeah. And, and Naomi would say this too. To all of our readers, we realize situations change and that things aren't perfectly as you plan. Uh, like I said, most of our students are not traditional students. A lot of them are parents, people coming back. So we want to see your drive, the goals that you have, 
and to show that you're keeping working, you're trying to better yourself and improve. So if you've had plans that changed, if you had you know, a parent that you had to take care of, if you, had, if you had a child, all these different things that kind of derail you, we want to see that you're getting back to your goals and that you have specific things that you want to accomplish. So it's important to communicate all of those things. Um, we're coming towards the end of our time and our panelists have shared a lot of great items. I'd like for each of them to wrap up and share any thoughts that they've um, kind of have come to them uh, during this time. You can go in any order that you want. And I'll also say that there are a lot of other resources on our website that you can view, including a previous recording where we talk more about the Full Circle Scholarship, about how many scholarships there are in it, more of the details about it. That recording is on the scholarships page as well too. So you can go back and reference this because we really focus just on the actual application tonight. So once, once these three wonderful ladies finish up, I'll give you the code <laughs> to go fill out our survey. You can win some great prizes. So whoever wants to start can start. <laughs> My advice, last word of advice is um, you can't get funding if you don't apply. So apply for school and apply for funding. If you need help, reach out for help. There's lots of help. Um, if you need computer access, I know this is huge um, in Indian country. If you need like a local library or a place to go use the internet, um, talk to those around you, talk to your educators, talk to your schools, talk to your community. There's usually like a community center or a gas station or a McDonald's that everybody knows where you can get Wi-Fi. Um, but if you are having those struggles, also let us know because that's really important for us to know and um, be able to improve upon if things um, like access are barriers to filling out applications online and things like that. So my advice though is just apply. <laughs> And I think my advice would be even again, if you don't get it the first time, if you get that denial letter, remember there's only so much funding out there, although we wish that um, everybody wishes that there was funding for everybody to go to school, there's not. <laughs> um, and so it's not a give up, it's a try again. And, um, you know, if, if you're one of those people that's like me and you like to, <laughs> like to critique things, um, you know, go back and maybe look again and see, re, you know, just like Samantha was talking about, reread those essays again and see if there were things that you wished you could have proved on because it's continuous improvement for later. Um, but I did see some comments please, for like kids in high school, <laughs> um, apply early. Please do not be like me where it was in my first quarter of my freshman year and barely had enough money to survive. I was ended up having to do work study to make, basically I was making $50 every two weeks so that I could pay for my tuition. And then my grandparents thankfully were helping me as well so that I could continue. Because I didn't have, even though I was second generation, my mom didn't impart those skills on me. And so I had to learn the hard way. So <laughs> apply early and apply for everything. And you know, don't look for um, something that just says Native American. Don't look for something that just says, you know, going to law school or I'm going to do substance misuse disorder. Apply for anything that you think you can qualify for. Um, it's statistical that over like $2.5 million goes unclaimed in scholarships every year just because somebody doesn't want to apply. But my other, my very last piece of advice is make sure that um, get yourself like a thumb drive or a Google Doc where you can house all of the information that's needed for scholarships. It's going to make your life for applying so much easier than it does if you try to pull it all together every time. And just like Naomi was saying, it makes it look more put together um, because you can go in and adjust those essays. You can go in and adjust the transcripts and all of that. So preparation is key. And remember in the long run, it's almost like a job. If you spend 30 minutes and you make back thousand dollars, how many dollars did you make a minute? Trust me, that's not even close to my paycheck a month. So it's totally worth it to apply for scholarships for sure. I will echo all of that. And I just want to add to like, apply, please. And I think a big hurdle to people not applying is because they either think that they don't deserve it or people haven't told them that they should. And like, this is me telling you if you're waiting for a sign like apply and that imposter syndrome can feel 
really deep uh, for Native people, I think in particular, and for Native women, women of color, marginalized communities, what have you. And, I, and so this is your sign, apply to everything and reach for the stars. Um, you are smart, you are loved, and you're making your ancestors and your future babies over here very, very proud in everything you do. Um, and so I'll put my email in this chat too, if, I, if anyone's thinking of law school or thinking of added, like applying to things and wanna get in touch, like just give me an email. I'll put it in now, but that's all I got. Good top of time to move everyone, especially panelists for sharing um, tonight too. All right, well, I wanna thank everyone, especially our panelists, Shoshani and Samantha and Naomi. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I wanna tell everyone one more time, if you do want additional resources in addition to the scholarships information, you can follow us on social media at Native Pathways or collegefund.org forward slash Native Pathways. That's where uh, the link uh, to this event and a lot of other free events that we offer are. So you can find other additional resources there, but here comes the money. So we have our giveaway. I'm gonna put into the chat the, the link as well. So if you just go to this link right here, the Survey Monkey link, fill it out, tell us what you thought about the event that we um, had tonight. We would greatly appreciate it. We appreciate you attending uh, and considering the Full Circle Scholarship. Just remember, not, not even just for you, but if you know of other people that can benefit from this opportunity, please share it. We have thousands of opportunities that we're offering to students every year, both through the full circle and through our specific tribal college scholarships. And we need lots of great applicants to apply. So you can either go to this link here for the survey monkey or look in the chat. I think I've, yeah, we've pasted that in there. So uh, I'll leave that up for a minute. And um, thank you so much for attending tonight. Thank you, everyone. This is the end of our event. And like I said, on that scholarships page, we also have um, our recording from our event earlier this semester, talking about some of the more specifics about the full circle, not just the application, but what's available, how you apply, all those types of things. All those additional resources are there. The video that has our walkthrough application, all that you can check it out. I will post the link to the survey one more time, Survey Monkey. So please go fill that out. Let us know if we can do a better job, uh, if you like what we did, and you can win some great prizes. We've got tablets, we've got earbuds, we've got t-shirts, books, all sorts of great things that we wanna send you. And thank you for uh, joining us and for applying too. Just remember deadline is May 31st for our application. So please work early, work long, <laughs> get your application ready. And uh, we want you to be successful in this. So that's the reason that we have these types of outreaches and um, lots, of, lots of different resources online for you to view. So I think I'll wrap things up now. Thank you so much for, um, for coming to our event tonight. And uh, like I said, like, excuse me, like Daniel said, if you have specific questions that you can't get answers to on our website, uh, with our chat bot that we have on the website through our social media. We, we take questions there. You can always email us college fund, excuse me, uh, uh, scholarships at collegefund.org. You can send that email. That, that email is also on our website as well. Reach out to us. We want to help you to be successful. So thank you so much. Hope you have a great night and uh, we'll hopefully be seeing your application in our box really soon. Thank you so much. Bye.